now that the 2020 Olympics, you know, the ones that took place in 2021, are now over, and I watched a lot of it, I decided that I would make a tier list video of all of the Olympic events. Keep in mind I'm going to be ranking this by how exciting they are to watch, and so not so much about how fun it is to actually maybe play said sp sport, event, whatever you want to call it, but rather how much the audience can really get out of it, and it's more so my own opinion because, you know, people, people have their own opinions about stuff. And also for the lesser known events that I'm sure a lot of other people don't really watch, I'm going to maybe explain a little bit about the event and maybe try to make my uh, picks a little bit clearer. Well, anyway, starting off, we have 3v3 basketball. And honestly, for a new Olympic event, I was surprised how much I liked this one. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. It's S tier. Because essentially, you take basketball, which is already a pretty solid sport on its own right, but then you speed it up by taking away all of the going back and forth between the different sides of the court, and it's just constantly going. And not to mention the fact that the time limit is the time limit is rather short, and if you get 21 points, you just automatically win. And so it's basically speed basketball, if you want to put it like that. And so it takes away a lot of the boring wait time that you sometimes see in regular basketball and just speeds it up, and I think... <laughs> I think because of that, it definitely deserves S tier, and it's one of the best additions to the Olympics this year. Anyway, starting up next is archery, and I'm just going to go ahead and let me see if I can find shooting real quick, because honestly, those are on, they're about the same, really. And so for archery and shooting, I'm going to put both of them in B tier. They can actually be pretty exciting at times, even though it's mostly just people standing there and shooting away at targets, and sadly the TV uh, the TV showings of it don't really show you the targets all that much, at least not in shooting, but it does in archery. Like it actually, it actually will show the target a lot of the time in archery, but not so much in shooting, especially because what essentially they're shooting at is like the size of a nickel or something. An American nickel are like two of them I don't remember the exact uh, I don't remember the exact size but it is tiny and it's not really much of a point in showing what they're shooting at because you wouldn't be able to see it anyway it's typically shown like the cameras are usually shown showing the faces of the competitors rather than some sort of angle at their back where you can maybe see both of them shooting and the target it might work for archery but it will not work for shooting and there were actually some pretty uh, intense competitions here and there for all the different shootings. Because keep in mind that there's a lot of different disciplines within the shooting category. For archery, it's basically men's, women's, mixed team. That's it. But for shooting, there's different, uh, there's different distances at which you're shooting at. There's different guns like the uh, pistol and the rifle, and then there are even things where you move. Where you, and then there are even disciplines where you're shooting at moving targets, and so there's actually a lot more variety within shooting. But honestly, though, both of them seem about the same, and so I decided to put both of them up here. Kind of surprised at how much I liked both of them, honestly. Next up is gymnastics, and gotta say, I'm looking at this from an American perspective. Uh, I don't know if non-Americans know this, but the American coverage of the Olympics is quite bad. Like, really, really bad. Because the only place where you can watch the Olympics in America is through NBC. And NBC likes to not show a lot of stuff. They like to focus on the American stuff specifically and try to focus on some of the biggest sports, especially the ones that Americans do well at, aka gymnastics, swimming, and track and field, specifically the sprints. Those are like the three most popular events that people watch. And so because of that, NBC will continue to show 
those things and have coverage for those three types of things over and over and over again instead of showing some of the other events some of the lesser known stuff you have to really search to be able to find ways to watch those stuff whereas in other countries I hear that it's a lot easier to watch whatever the heck you want and so I almost feel like my opinion of of at least gymnastics and swimming maybe a little bit less because of that but eh, I can give gymnastics an A here because like some of it I don't really like specifically I guess they're a bit more artistic in some respects but things like the high bar and the uneven bars are really entertaining to watch for me and it is also pretty impressive to see some of the uh, feats that they can pull off it just sucks that Literally, if I tried to watch it on TV, I just hear Simone Biles' name over and over and over and over again. And when she didn't really compete at the Olympics, instead of showing actual events, they decided to just talk about her not competing. Again, uh, if you can't tell, I really hate NBC <laughs> and their coverage of the Olympics. Anyway, up next is artistic swimming. And so yeah, artistic swimming is more or less like performances done through swimming. If you want to put it like this way, it's ballet in the water and I guess the surrounding areas of the pool as well. It's not really my thing. I can see how some people would like it, but for me, it's a D tier. I'm sorry. It's If you like ballet, you'll probably like this event or these events, I should say, but it's just not for me. Anyway, up next is considered athletics, which basically means track and field. This is all of the different field events, such as throwing, jumps, and then all of the different running besides the triathlon, I believe. That's the only thing that has running in it that isn't a part of this. Oh, and then the modern pentathlon as well. And so this has the sprints, has the marathon, has the middle and long distances running it basically just has everything you think of when you think of track and field the race walk interestingly enough and honestly there's not really too many events that i don't like obviously throwing events can be sort of rough to watch live and especially with nbc's coverage of it which you have to for for those that don't know americans out there you can watch any event you want to live it's just that you have to go through the specific website of nbc's that they don't tell you about like ever and the problem is with some of these lesser less exciting events such as throwing it's literally just a live stream of them throwing and no commentary whatsoever Whereas they will have like a, a separate dedicated live stream that will sort of go back and forth between a bunch of different track and field events that will have commentary on it. And it's not necessarily live, but they'll like show you a little bit of stuff. But anyway, it's pretty obvious that this is S tier. Because me personally, I was a cross country runner back in high school. So I enjoy things like the 5k, 10k and uh, marathon. The race walk is for the 10k and or excuse me it's a 20k and 50k those are really interesting to watch they're goofy and they're just so dumb that they're lovable type of thing and even stuff like the 800 but then you also get into the sprints which are some of the most exciting parts of the olympics personally i'm sure a lot of other people feel the same so the 400 200 and 100 then you also get into things like the hurdles and then you also get into like the throwing events jumping events pole vaulting as well that counts as a jumping event that's pretty exciting anyway i don't think i have to explain this one this is like when people think of the olympics they usually think of track and field and so i don't think i really have to explain why this is s tier anyway badminton what do i say about badminton well it's basically tennis but the court is a lot smaller and the the people who are playing, they have to have much quicker reflexes because of that. And I feel like because of all of that, the game is very fast and sort of difficult to watch. But at the same time, I also feel like it's at least exciting enough 
to put it in B tier. I just feel like the game itself is just a little bit too difficult to watch for me to put it any higher than this, but it's still rather interesting to watch here and there. It's just also difficult to watch because the Chinese just absolutely dominate this sport, and so it's kind of difficult to watch just knowing that the Chinese are going to win every single time, which I say that as if a person from Norway didn't win the gold in the men's singles, so that was fun. Anyway, up next is baseball, and I'm just going to go ahead and put softball in the same, uh, same tier as them if I can find it. Skateboarding, da, 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 da. where is softball? This is awkward. Oh, I was looking for a person batting, but it's a person throwing like a softball player does, of course. Yeah, so these two events have been out of the Olympics for a few years, but they finally came back for the 2020. And sadly, they will not be there for the 2024 in Paris because, probably because uh, France doesn't really have the ability to have baseball stadiums or something. But they will be back for 2028 in Los Angeles. Anyway, I've, I've played a good bit of baseball growing up and I've watched a lot more. And so because of that, I am quite glad that they brought these back for the Olympics in 2020. Or I should say 2021, but still. Uh, honestly, in the early parts of the Olympics, softball was like my favorite thing to watch in like the first week or so. It was the most entertaining thing that was on at the time, honestly. And then baseball came around. But the thing is... Baseball can be a little bit slow at times, and so it can be a little bit rough to watch. Luckily, there weren't too many teams. It wasn't like the other team sports where there's pool play, and then you go into quarterfinals, and then all of this. The way softball worked was you had six teams that qualified, and every team played each other, and then the third and fourth best teams at the end, the best records, they played in the bronze medal game, which was Mexico and Canada. I think Canada ended up winning. And then the best two would play in the gold match for silver and gold to which the US got silver and Japan got gold whereas on the baseball front they played however many games and got seeded or whatever and then they basically played a double elimination tournament until the very last game the gold medal game which was just winner take all and of course if you were watching US got silver and Japan got gold again I think I'm going to go ahead and say that both of these are in A tier. Again, baseball is a little bit too slow for some people, and myself included sometimes, and so I can't give it S tier, but I think it's entertaining enough to go with A, especially to see how other countries besides America actually does in baseball and, and softball, because I'm only really familiar with like the baseball slash softball landscape in places like the US and Japan, a little bit of Korea. Obviously the Dominican Republic, they live and breathe baseball there. But the one thing I will say is that what's really also keeping baseball from being an S tier is the lack of competition. Same with softball, honestly. Like watching Italy play in softball was so hard to watch because they were just that bad. And the thing is, that means that they were one of the six best teams in the world. I just feel like these sports aren't uh, popular enough in certain parts of the world for the competition to be good enough to be entertaining, especially when the, especially in baseball, when the biggest league in the world for baseball, the MLB, wouldn't allow its players to play in the Olympics. And so the U.S. team ended up being a bunch of minor league players with a few Japanese league players thrown in there as well because some Americans decide to go and play in Japan instead of the minors. And so the thing is, even though Japan won, I feel like it would have easily been the U.S. versus Dominican Republic if MLB players were allowed to play, but who knows? I think, yeah, just keeping these in eights here because of the little lack of competition and it, just the overall slowness of baseball. It was actually pretty entertaining to watch though. Up next is basketball. And not gonna lie, 
I've never really been the biggest fan of basketball. I put 3v3 up here just because it was actually pretty exciting and took away some of the slowness that basketball can have sometimes. But at the same time, I will say that basketball was actually pretty entertaining to watch for the Olympics, and I will go ahead and give it A tier. It's interesting to see some of the uh, non-American teams out there because usually when you think of basketball, you think of America because of the NBA, maybe a little bit of, of certain parts of Europe, like Spain, France, whatnot. Probably think of China as well because they have a rather big league over there. But I, I don't know. I'm just not willing enough to give it S tier. It gets A for me. Moving on, we have beach volleyball, and I'm just going to go ahead and put volleyball over here as well, because they're honestly about the same, and so I'll rank them together. Gotta be honest, volleyball is honestly one of the most entertaining sports to watch. It really is. I was actually, I was actually genuinely surprised at how much I was enjoying watching it. Like, it was the only sport that I feel like I was really like cheering. Every time a team that I was watching and wanted to win actually got a point. And I'm just going to go ahead and put volleyball in S tier. Beach volleyball up there as well. Here's the thing about beach volleyball that actually makes it one of the best Olympic sports to watch. Uh, it's what they're wearing. Not going to lie. If you're into guys, they have the tank tops, the caps, the sunglasses the very definition of what some people may refer to as daddy i don't know not my thing but if you're into females then you know they're basically wearing swimsuits and it's pretty nice so essentially it edges out volleyball i'm not really ordering these i haven't mentioned that yet just sort of putting them into here is not really focusing on the order too terribly much so i'm just going to go ahead and put all of the cycling stuff together real quick and so here we have BMX racing. This is BMX freestyle. This is road racing. This is speed speed cycling, and this is regular cycling, road cycling. I, I suppose it's called actually. But uh, the thing that a lot of these get is that they're involved in races, and races are pretty cool. And so for that, I'll put basically all of them in B tier. And then there's this one, which isn't racing, but I still think it gets B tier for me. The thing about BMX is that it's very quick. It's very straightforward. There's a lot of crashes this year, although that could have been just because the courses weren't made too terribly great, according to some people that I've seen. And so it was actually pretty exciting. I really enjoyed that one. It was like very quick, straight to the point, just race around this track or this course, I should say, and yeah, that was pretty nice. Uh, road, or excuse me, cross country cycling is basically like BMX, but a lot longer. I feel like this one maybe could go down to C, but yeah, I think I'll just go ahead and put it with everything else, all the other cycling. It's still a race, essentially. And then, sort of the same thing with road cycling. It can be a little bit too long at times, which maybe makes me want to put it down in C tier, but I mean, it's still racing. You can still get some enjoyment out of it. So get the occasional crash that might be exciting for some viewers. And then we have speed cycling. This is very, very strange. And I was very tempted to put this one in C tier just because a lot of it isn't even racing. It's basically, the way speed cycling basically works is you have a ton of different events that make no sense if you're trying to get into watching it. <laughs> because essentially what they'll do is they'll have like, for one event, they'll have time trials, which will have one person who is meant to be like the actual one who will score the time. And they actually have two events like this, I think. Actually, no, I take that back. They have they have a team one where everyone has to score, but it functions similarly to the one where only one person scores, in which you basically have two people there and the one where the one person scores, but that person the extra person who's there, they're basically just there to allow the score to draft off of them and get faster. It's basically just trying to be as fast as possible going through all of these scientific, technical stuff 
to try to get more speed. It's it's basically it, it's very sciencey and has a lot of uh, they have to do a lot of preparation for it, and basically just the teams will have their own equipment, just have to get that checked off by the Olympic staff, and they do that. It's uh, it's very strange to watch, but there are some parts of it that actually do, that actually do function a lot more like your traditional racing. But I'm trying to remember there's some that have to do with like points, not so much the actual time and racing. I mean, there's speed. There's speed racing where you literally have two teams of four on the track and they're literally racing each other. Although it's more time based rather than rather than like actually going up against each other because they're usually on the opposite side of the track. It's very strange. Almost makes me want to put it in C tier, but yeah, oh well. And then BMX freestyle, which is instead of racing. They're trying to do tricks, and it actually is pretty cool to watch. Quite enjoyed that. Again, actually, I'm trying to remember. Is this new to the Olympics this year? I should probably check in on that. Same with this. I'll check in on it. Anyway, up next is boxing. And I gotta be honest, I'm just gonna go ahead and put all of the martial arts stuff here in the, around the same thing, if I can find them. So let's see, there's karate... Judo, the other karate. Uh, let me see. Taekwondo. Be awkward if I missed one. Wrestling. Go ahead and put that there as well. Any other martial arts thing that I'm missing? Going through. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and put fencing in there as well. Anyway, gotta be honest, I don't like a lot of these. They're kind of boring to watch. I'll start off with boxing. And so the thing that I hate about boxing is that it feels like the only exciting part is when f someone finally is able to land that one punch that like knocks the other one out and everything else about it is somewhat technical and just starts getting into some stuff that the average viewer just doesn't really know about. And me, I am the average viewer especially when it comes to boxing, because I've just never really paid much attention to it otherwise. Uh, yeah, it gets C-tier for me. I'm sorry, I don't like it much. And it's especially not helped because the refs in the Olympics aren't very good. And so you have a lot more of the people just literally hugging each other for long periods of time because the refs won't separate them and start the match up again. Yeah, the boxing refs were not good in the Olympics. They really were not. One thing I will say, though, is that Olympic uh, boxing compared to the normal circuit is they're a lot more transparent with the scoring, which is good. That's something that regular boxing, or non-Olympic boxing, I should say, pro boxing, yeah, that works. Pro boxing should probably have more of, but oh well. It still only gets easier for me. And honestly, a lot of these are going to get C-tier. This is judo. If anyone doesn't know how judo works, basically you have this time limit that you have to uh, try and score points in, but you can also automatically win the match if you throw your opponent onto their back with force. That is what is referred to as an ipon, and you automatically win if you are able to do that. But if you throw your opponent onto their side with force, or a few other ways to do it, you get what's called a wazari. And that gets you 10 points. I hope I'm remembering this right. But if you get two of those, you automatically win. And then there's ways to get one point. If you have point, if you have the most amount of points at the end, then you win. If no one, or if they're tied at the end, you go into what's referred to as golden score, in which uh, the first person to score an extra point wins. And then there's also ways where you can just you can get too many penalties and then you just automatically lose at that point for accumulating too many of those. It's a very technical sport at times and that can make it a little bit rough to watch. And so because of that, I feel like it only gets C tier. It's, it sort of has the same deal with boxing where you're just waiting for that one really exciting moment where you're just able to see someone take down the other. Yeah, I'm not really feeling it. <laughs> Which then brings us to karate. And I'm trying to remember which one is which, looking at this. 
Uh, yeah, I think this is... I'm going to assume that this is the one... This is like the artistic one, and this is the actual people fighting each other, which makes sense because, you know, there's two people here. And this is referred to as Kara, and this is Kumite. And both of these were added this year. And this one is going to get C tier because, again, it, it's sort of like with these two. It's just too technical. The way karate works is basically you get points for doing certain stuff. Like, honestly, a lot of these are just way too technical. Like, I'm just going to go ahead and put Taekwondo and Wrestling in C tier. They're, it's just way too technical, and you have to really know what you're watching or like what, how to get points, especially in Taekwondo, excuse me, especially in Karate and Wrestling. Wrestling's the worst at this. It is the absolute worst because I don't know what really qualifies as a point beyond... If you pin your opponent's shoulders, you automatically win. That's all I know. <laughs> but beyond that, it's basically you perform certain techniques that can get you points. And if you have the most amount of points at the win, at the end, you win. And that's usually how matches end up. Because they're Olympic level and they're not going to allow themselves to get pinned. Same with judo. And then karate is sort of the same way. Uh, Taekwondo is a little bit better than the others in terms of what you're watching because it's not really that technical. It's pretty straightforward. If you get a kick to the uh, torso, that's one point. A kick to the head is two points. Actually, hold on. I'm trying to remember. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I think a kick to the head is... What is it? Oh, right. Okay, I remember now. I remember now. A punch to the torso is one point. A punch to the head is two points. A kick to the torso is two points. A kick to the head is three points. A rolling kick, which means like you're spinning around as you're kicking, to the torso is four points. And a rolling kick to the head is a whopping five points. Person with the most amount of points at the end wins. Same with these sports as well. These events, I didn't really mention that. So yeah, it's pretty straightforward, but... I've heard that it sort of dwindled in excitingness. Is that a word? It, and and how exciting it is over the years because uh, they have sensors on their helmet and their th whatever you would call it that they're wearing around their torso, and the amount of force needed to score points has been uh, lowered over the years, and so it basically makes it feel like they're fencing with their legs, if you will. It's not that exciting to watch at times, and it's I've heard that because of that lowered uh, that lowered sensibility, it's just not as exciting. Which you may be wondering why I left out this one. And actually, I probably shouldn't have put fencing with the rest of these, but I'll just go ahead and say I'll just go ahead and do fencing real quick. Fencing is C tier for me because it goes by a little bit too quick, which can kind of happen with taekwondo as well i've kind of said that taekwondo is fencing but with legs rather than the actual swords and for those who don't know there's three different types of swords for fencing there is the foil saber and i don't know how to say it but it's spelled e-p-e-e -E -E. i would assume that's like a pay oh gosh please don't be mad at me if i mispronounce that but yeah it's it happens a little bit too quick Honestly, the team matches are so much fun, so much more fun to watch because people are more offensive in that and they don't really care as much about defense because they have their teammates to sort of like help them out or like sort of be something that they can lean on in terms of trying to win the match. And so you see a lot more offense in the team matches, which makes them a bit more fun to watch. It's not as fun to watch. Uh, it's not fun to watch a defensive fencing match, essentially. And for those who don't know how fencing works, you basically just have to touch some point of your sword onto your opponent's body, and they have sensors, and you get a point for that. And, yeah, it, it's actually it's, it's somewhat fun to watch. I think it's at least fun enough to not put it in D tier, but, again, it just happens way too fast for me to put it any higher than this. You can't really see what you're doing too well. It's almost tempting to put in a B tier. It's the only one here that I would really be willing to put in B tier, but oh well. 
And as for the second karate thing, karate kata, or kata, excuse me, kata. The reason why I left this one out is because it's not actual fighting. It's artistic karate. Not too much of a fan of people just sitting there yelling, randomly throwing out punches, chops, or kicks, or whatever. It's not that exciting to watch. It's very technical, and the audience can't really get into it too much, because it's basically whatever these judges' opinions are. Which is honestly, again, why I put this down here. It's You can get a bit more out of artistic slimming. It's a bit cooler to watch, but... I, yeah... This, this deserves D tier, I'm sorry. Anyway, moving on is the Canoe Solemn? Sol S-L-A-L-O-M, however you pronounce that. Basically what it means is you're in a little canoe and you are trying to go through these gates that, uh, that are numbered and you have to go in them in the right order. You're basically going around this artificial man-made river. So really high currents and you're basically just trying to maneuver around and be able to get through the gates and post the fastest time the fastest uh, time trial time and it's actually somewhat exciting to watch it's very interesting at times but you know you can only get so much out of it i feel like it's only worth c tier and then you have the other canoeing event which also has like kayaking and stuff the canoe sprints, and this is basically the exact same as rowing, so I'm just going to go ahead and put those two together. Because basically the only difference is the type of vessel that they're on and then the way that they're rowing. Functionally, as a viewer, they look the exact same. But they are races, and they are actually are pretty short most of the time. And so I feel like they're good enough to get B tier. But, you know, they're they're okay to watch they're definitely something that's worth watching a little bit here and there of but they're not really up here with the s and a tiers they're still pretty solid to watch though i enjoyed what i watched of those anyway moving on is diving diving is very technical very very technical and it feels like i am watching the same people do the same stuff over and over and over and over again with a lot of time in between those over and overs again it goes by very slowly it's difficult to watch if you don't know what the heck is going on of course i realize that the point is you basically want to make sure that you don't create too much of a splash in the water as well as some other very technical stuff that I don't really know of and is more so just whatever the heck the judges think. If you can't tell, this is going to be D tier. The only thing that I can really tell with diving is with synchronized diving, it's a bit easier to tell when something goes wrong because the people are supposed to be synchronized. Beyond that, it gets too technical for me average viewer person to know what the heck is going on it gets d tier it's not even like exciting enough to what i'm watching like something like uh something like artistic swimming where it's like somewhat of a performance that i can actually enjoy a little bit of it's just diving it looks pretty impressive at times but it's just the same thing over and over and over again and something that I should probably mention here is that sure it's difficult to do this probably but it's also probably difficult to do literally everything on this list and so to use that as an excuse as to why I should put it higher is not a good idea which brings us to the equestrian stuff and gotta be honest I it's it's dreadfully boring to watch equestrian I'm sorry if you don't know, this is dressage, this is eventing, and this is jumping. I'm just going to put all three of these together. Dressage is by far the worst. If I were to put something below D tier, I would put dressage, or excuse me, I've been saying it wrong, dressage. Dressage. That is how you pronounce it. Dressage is basically watching horses prance around, and that is literally it. That is the only thing that is in dressage. 
it is dreadfully boring to watch. It's extremely weird, but it's not like the good type of weird like race walking where like you can actually tell a point to it. It's literally just horses prancing around and you basically get scored by the judge's decision and it's just not interesting to watch. Eventing and jumping are a little bit better, maybe C tier, but no, they're still not good enough for me to get higher than D tier. They're just not interesting to watch, I'm sorry. Especially if you're just not like a dedicated horse person these events just aren't very interesting. If you are, maybe they're a bit higher for you, but you can only get so much enjoyment out of them. And for me, it's not very much. <laughs> anyway, up next is field hockey, which is actually pretty interesting, but it's, you know, it's not as interesting as actual ice hockey because you can't be as rough and stuff with it, but it's still interesting enough. And I'll actually go ahead and give it A tier because a lot of team sports actually are pretty high up there for me. They're usually some of the most interesting stuff to watch, and so field hockey sort of feels that that Summer Olympics hockey thing, because obviously regular ice hockey is in the Winter Olympics. I don't really know how to describe it. I don't know. It's A tier. I'm just going to go with that. And then moving on is what us Americans, as well as, I believe, Can I almost said Canada, Canada, and weirdly enough, Japan call soccer, but basically the rest of the world calls football. And so I'm somewhat torn as to whether I should put this in A tier or S tier, because it actually is pretty interesting, because at least on the women's side, you actually do get the national teams that will play in the World Cup and stuff, but on the men's side, you only get U23, and so maybe the competition isn't as great, but it's still it's still good enough to keep you interested. I don't know. You know what? I'll give it S tier. S for soccer. Just to upset maybe some Europeans and stuff out there. Then up next is golf, and I'm just gonna for some strange reason, I'm just gonna go ahead and put tennis here as well. Because I kind of view them the same. And the fact that like I prom I'm probably more favorable than most at these two sports, but the thing that's like really lessening how much I like them is the fact that it's Olympic golf and Olympic tennis. If I'm going to watch golf, I can't say that I'm going to try to watch it for the Olympics. Same with tennis. I'm going to try to watch stuff like the US Open, the British Open, the Masters, Wimbledon, I'm going to watch those stuff if I'm going to watch golf or tennis. And for the Olympic level, it's just not as interesting to me. I feel like one thing that golf could really use for the Olympics is team level golf. That would be super interesting. Something like the Ryder Cup, maybe. But I, <laughs> I, I don't know. Part of me wants to put it in C tier, but then part of me is like, well, I'll, I usually like golf and tennis enough to put it in B. But just because of the fact that it's the Olympic level, uh, I'll put it in B. I'll bite the bullet. Because, I mean, tennis and badminton are basically the exact same. I don't think it's fair to, for me to put tennis in C. When I would... Honestly, there are times where I'd probably prefer to watch tennis over badminton, in fact, most of the time. Anyway, up next is handball, which is a sport that we do not have here in America, but it is honestly one of the most interesting things to watch. And I'm just going to go ahead and put water polo around here as well, just because if you think about it, they're basically the exact same sport, but one is played in water and one is played on land. But no one put that together. The thing is, they even have the same size of teams. Like six players and a goalie. So seven total. But if I were to go ahead and rank them, I would say S tier. Handball is extremely interesting to watch. It's really interesting. I'm sure for some people it's not all that great because uh, it's very difficult to block like the goalies are maybe saving about 30% of the balls thrown at them. 
and that makes the games like really high scoring, usually in the upper 20s, maybe even 30s at times. Whereas something like water polo, obviously you can only really get someone like from the shoulders up, score on them that way. And so that the matches are a lot, uh, they don't have as high of a score essentially. And the thing that like really separates these two, even though they are essentially the same sport, but one on land and one on in water is the fact that if you're on land, you can do a lot more cool tricks and stuff. Like, I don't know if I've explained exactly what handball is, but essentially you literally have a ball, it's in your hand, you try to throw it into the net, but there's this area around the uh, goal that if you're on offense, you cannot step into. You can, and so what happens is that you can uh, essentially make a running jump for it. And so like you run up and as soon as you get to the line that you can't cross, you jump up and then you try to get as close as you can to get off a good shot on the goal. And so because of that, if you're on land, you can get like these really interesting shots and it actually looks really cool to watch. Whereas you can't really do that because you can't really jump in the water. And if you do, it, it, it doesn't really help you much in uh, water polo, honestly. But I will say that water polo has the special distinction of being one of the most excruciating sports to actually play. Out of anything here, this is like the most excruciating and deserves like the same amount of stamina that you would need for like a marathon or something, or like a triathlon. It's it's rough, to, especially because like you don't really see it much when you're just watching on TV, watching from above the water. But whenever they show those underwater shots and you see what's actually going on under there and how like viciously their legs are just flopping about trying to stay in the same position. Yeah. But because of the fact that you can't really get at all the exciting tricks and stuff that you can in that you can in handball in water polo, water polo only gets a tier for me. Anyway, moving on is long distance swimming, which, hold on, let me look for the actual uh, thing here. Marathon swimming, which I don't remember the exact distance. Hopefully I'll put that up on screen here. I'm sorry, but actually, hmm. Do I put it in D or C? I'll put it in C because at the very least it's a race, but actually, Okay, I'll leave it in C for now. It is dreadfully boring to watch at times because it's like little ripples in the water. Okay, now I've convinced myself. It's D. It's not. It's not exciting to watch. It's a. It's a very long race, and you're basically watching little ripples in the water. It's very difficult to see what the heck is going on. You can't get good camera angles of it. It's just. Oh hey, I guess this person won. Okay, that's cool. Moving on is the modern pentathlon, which has some uh, some interesting stuff in it. If you can see, there's fencing, equestrian, shooting, swimming, the meta words, swimming, and running. Except that the running and the shooting happen in the same thing, as in you keep on running around a track, and once you get to a certain point, you stop running, and then you literally shoot until you shoot five targets in a row and then you go back to running and it's just constantly over and over and over again but the fencing the equestrian and the swimming happen on their own it's interesting i guess i don't know it has running it has shooting it makes me want to put it in b it has swimming in there as well fencing you know fencing is fencing equestrian stuff yeah it it ends up evening out to about a B. I don't know who came up with this weird event, but it exists, I guess. Anyway, whatever. Artistic gymnastics, excuse me, rhythmic gymnastics. This is artistic gymnastics. This is rhythmic. I was fully prepared when I was thinking about doing this list because this is actually one of the last events at the Olympics. It was within the past or the last few days of it. I was very tempted to just instantly throw this in D tier until I actually watched it. And I was like, hmm, that's actually really interesting. That's actually pretty cool. I enjoyed the performance I just watched. <laughs> and 
And so because of that, I'll actually at least give this one C tier. This is like the only real performance uh, event that I'll give for this, where you're essentially putting on a performance for the audience uh, rather than competing, I guess you could say. I guess you're doing both. You kind of get what I mean, hopefully. But essentially, I was not expecting too much out of it because it felt like it was just going to be a little bit of dancing with this weird string thing. But when I actually saw the things that you could like do with the string or the ribbon or whatever it's called and make it look like super cool and interesting, I was like, okay, that's good enough to get seeds here. That's actually kind of cool. Anyway, moving on though is rugby. Rugby is basically what it's basically the closest you can get to what us Americans call football, which by the way probably should not be an Olympic sport because basically only two places play football in the world, America and Canada, and the thing is we play two different versions of it. So yeah, rugby. Rugby is actually really interesting. Rugby is where just the absolute hosses of human beings play, who are super fast, super strong, just they're amazing athletes essentially is what I'm trying to say. And uh, it's, again, it's, it's basically somewhere between the two footballs of the world, the American football and then the non-American football, what we Americans call soccer. And because of that, I'm going to go ahead and give it S because American football is one of my favorite things to watch and I gave soccer S and so the weird mix between them, which thinking about it, American football probably stemmed from rugby. Yeah, that's also going to get S tier. It's actually pretty interesting to watch for those who don't know how rugby works. Basically, uh, you can toss the ball backwards, you can kick the ball forwards, but you cannot throw the ball forward and uh, you're basically just trying to score and the score zone thing, I don't know the technical term for it, it's what us Americans would call a touchdown probably. And just because you like get in the zone, that doesn't mean it's just like automatically over. You have to like touch the ball down within the zone and wherever you touch it at, you go a few, uh, I guess meters, yards out and you basically try to kick a field goal from that spot. And so if you're in the middle, that's pretty easy. If you're out by the sidelines, not as easy, actually pretty difficult. But uh, the point is that it's a lot easier to score from the sidelines, from the sides than it is in the middle. And for actually scoring, you get five points if you kick the extra thing after the extra field goal after you get an extra two points. And yeah, it's actually pretty interesting. Quite enjoyed it. Next up though is sailing. Sailing and dressage are the worst two Olympic sports to watch. There are a lot of different disciplines in sailing, but somehow, some way, all of them are dreadfully boring. I want you I want you all to imagine this real quick. I want you to think about a bunch of ants just scrambling around on the ground imagine that and how interesting that is to watch or how not interesting that is to watch i should say that's what sailing is except it's boats in the water instead of ants on land <laughs> it is dreadfully boring to watch and i don't want to continue talking about it because it's just that boring but anyway up next is skateboarding, which I'm just going to go ahead and put surfing in there as well because they are basically the exact same thing, but one is on land and one is on water. I'm going to go ahead and put them in B tier because they're actually pretty similar to the BMX freestyle, which essentially you just get to do cool tricks and stuff. And the reason why like these get judged higher than, say, the other things where you're trying to like do performances, if you will, it's just because you can actually more easily tell if something is cool looking compared to say uh, artistic swimming karate kata and uh, where was the other one diving yeah diving 
because at least with diving it feels like you're watching the exact same thing over and over and over again but you can see a lot more variety in what people are doing here and so yeah I, I, they're pretty cool I, I give them B I really like that they added surfing to the Olympics it just feels so right especially because uh, the gold medal winner uh, on the women's side anyway was from Hawaii and Hawaii is where surfing originated if people did not know that up next is another new inclusion to this year's Olympics sport climbing sport climbing was very very close to being the top Olympic sport added this year obviously I'm nothing's going to beat the 3v3 basketball but here we do have sport climbing I'm just gonna go ahead and say sport climbing is an A but it was very very close to being an S here's the thing here's the problem Sport climbing has three disciplines all put together in one. And so if you want to think about it like this, if you were to think about gymnastics, imagine if there was only one event where you do everything. You only have the all around and you do not have the individual events also. That's what sport climbing is. It is three very, I shouldn't say very different, but rather different things all put together in one event. And that's the only thing that they have. And so it's split up into speed, speed, bouldering, and uh, put the other one on screen because I forget. And so essentially the first one is like very exciting. I love the first one, speed. It's essentially people's trying to scale up a wall as fast as possible, and it is so exciting to watch. I absolutely love it. It's, it's up there with all the other S-tier stuff. And bouldering can actually be pretty interesting as well to try to see how people tackle stuff, but it's a little bit too slow for uh, some people's ta taste, myself included a little bit. But it is also pretty interesting though. It's it's very different. And then the last event is somewhere in between. It's essentially just trying to... I guess I should try to explain it. So basically, the way sport climbing works in the Olympics is you're trying to... The speed event first off you're trying to get up a wall as quickly as possible to touch a button and the fastest time obviously wins and if you get to the finals it's basically scored like this you uh there's eight people in the finals and if you get first place you get one point if you get eighth place you get eight points and this is like that for the other events as well the uh the other two but for bouldering it's essentially you have three different uh, courses if you will that are all difficult and weird and you have essentially a midway point a zone as it's called if you get to that you get a point if you uh, I shouldn't say that uh, you get scored <laughs> and then you get a second one if you get to the top and so it's you can get up to six and that but that's not actually the, the points like what I was talking about with speed because it Again, it basically comes down to placement. If you get first place in bouldering, you get one point. Eight plate, eighth place gets eight. And then the other one is basically like a standard rock wall, but somewhat difficult. Again, it's somewhere in between. You have a time limit, and you're basically just trying to get up as far as you can without falling. Person who gets up the highest wins, but if there's multiple people who make it to the top, it's whoever got to there quickest. There is a top to it. And so, again, you get one point for first place, eight points for eighth place, and then at the end, all of your points are multiplied times each other, and whoever has the lowest score wins. It's very strange. It would get S tier if, uh, if it weren't for the fact that all three of these, which are somewhat different, are all put into one event. It's basically, you have one all-around event, and that's it. That's all you get. It really should have the individuals as well next up though is swimming the golden boy of NBC swimming is shoved down people's throats so much in America in America for watching the Olympics it is very annoying but you know what there's a reason why it's shoved down people's throats it's very exciting to watch it's racing I love racing it's rather quick Swimming definitely does deserve S tier. It can just be a little bit annoying to people at times. Table tennis. It's essentially badminton and tennis. 
but table tennis makes sense. Trampoline gymnastics. I can at least give it C tier. Just because you have the occasional tumble. There's it's pretty interesting to see how high up they can get, but it's it's only you can only get so much out of it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, by the way, let me just go ahead and get rid of this one. It's very easy. Weightlifting is not interesting to watch at all. Like, just at all. Then you have the triathlon. It is cycling, it is swimming, but it's more so the long-distance swimming, which I put all the way down here in D. Sure, it has the running that I put up here in S tier. It is swimming, or excuse me, that's the long-distance, so it's D. It has uh, the cycling, which I also put in B, but it just takes forever it's a race, sure, but it's it's sort of along the same lines as cycling, where it, it's just too long of a race to really pay too much attention to. And so, yeah, that one only gets a B tier for me. And so this is my list. Feel free to disagree and or agree. And there you have it.